Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Buddhang dhammang sanghang namasami. So yesterday, uh, I went to the uh, uh, Sudana Center. It's associated with the uh, Dharma Realm Buddhist University, and um, uh, the the university students and teachers and staff were gathered there. Uh, for three days, um, Ajahn Yaniko did the first day, Ajahn Kurundamo did the second day, I did the third day. And and they were having a three-day retreat on the um, Four Foundations of Mindfulness. And so that, uh, so of course that theme is still running through my mind and it's a uh, Worthy theme to to uh, uh, bring to to uh, attention and and uh, and to reflect on as these uh, four foundations of uh, mindfulness are quite central to the to the Buddha's teaching and to the uh, to the Buddha's path of practice uh, in the in the discourse itself, the Buddha uh, gives a, uh, let's say, quite a, a, a strong statement saying that, that it's a, uh, these four foundations are, are a teaching or practice that leads in one way only, and that, that's to the, to the ending of suffering to full liberation. Um, and that, uh, uh, recollection or that reflection is, uh, I mean, something that is is uh, is rare that the Buddha is so so emphatic. Um, so that uh, and with the teaching itself, the the Buddha is just taking what is uh, quite ordinary um, and uh, but making it making it conscious as a as an object of attention and 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 awareness so the uh, the body itself the uh, feelings and feelings in a sense is is a uh, much more of a, a fundamental sense in in that uh, pleasant unpleasant neutral um, the mind and then the um, Dhammas, or it's like phenomena, mind objects. Um, so different category ca- categories of of attention within the mind to be observant of. So this uh, uh, the taking or lifting up of the uh, um, the uh, say the body in in different ways. Uh, um, the uh, say mindfulness of the elements, in a sense, looking at the body as a as its 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 fundamental elements, 
sometimes saying in terms of its uh, so like I would say just in terms of um, uh, the element of solidity, the element of, of, of fluidity, the element of heat, the element of, of expansion and contraction, or the air element. Um, so that, that's a helpful way of viewing the body in a way that doesn't keep re, reaffirming our, our identity and uh, identification that we, we, we so tend to have. Uh, reflecting in terms of just mindfulness and clear comprehension, um, really having a a grounded awareness in in our as we change postures, as we move, as we engage, as we speak, as we as we don't speak, and uh, just really being able to have that continuity of mindfulness and clear comprehension as a foundation, but using the body as a base. Um, re- recollecting in terms of, of the, uh, just the, uh, the parts of the body, um, that sense of, of what we call body is just a collection of, of parts, uh, various bits and pieces that we, we, we call ourselves, hair of the head, hair of the body. Um, nails, teeth, skin, internal organs, fluids, and, uh, and having that sense of, of reflecting on the body in a way where, because uh, so much of the, say the, you know, the Buddhist teachings are um, uh, uh, trying to get us to take a look at both internal, external phenomena in a way that, that allows us to not keep recreating this, that sense of I and me and mine. There's a, a t- uh, that identification is 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 so strong, and uh, but it's something that the Buddha um, um, just points to as this is something that we are doing. Uh, it's not something that's inherent. Um, it's a, uh, um, and uh, the, in the, the actual la- scriptural language, it's like, it's like the eye making, it's a hankara, so the eye making is where uh, it's uh, something that we're, we're doing, we're engaging in. Uh, um, it's a habitual process that we, we invest in. So we, I making the mind making. Uh, this is mine, uh, and then the underlying tendency to conceit, and that, and, and the Buddha uses. And sometimes the language is is uh, it's hard to get equivalence. But what the what the ten the the word that that is translated as conceit in in uh, from the scriptural language. Is a uh, <clears throat> because in English when we think of conceit, then it's sort of by like having a um, elevating, lifting oneself up, or, or looking down on somebody, um, and there's a, a conceit. But the, there's a, the from the, the the Buddhist perspective, there's the sense of conceit is is one of viewing oneself through comparison, so either comparing comparing oneself to others and, and um, in terms of being inferior or equal or superior and really doesn't matter. And in whether it's true or not true, um, it's still this habit, uh, that habit of comparing. And that's where, uh, that's the, this, this sense of uh, what the Buddha calls conceit. So our continual tendency to compare ourselves to others and then evaluate and, uh, and either come up short or, or, or take a stand of um, um, being the same as or uh, you know, lifting oneself up. And 
and that, 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 so that that eye making, the mind making, the underlying tendency to conceit, um, and so so when we reflect on the <coughs> on the mind, of course it's the mind that's doing it, um, but sometimes the mind is just so hard to get a handle on. Um, Sagajan Cha uh, and, and emphasizing, you know, be careful of the mind. It's a liar and it's a cheat. <laughs> and it does. It, it has this, uh, and we we fall for the fall for it, uh, you know, fairly frequently. I think one of the times Sagajan Cha said, well, "It's not that we fall for the." Uh, <coughs> You know, the, the the way that the mind deceives us, uh, like a uh, like a like a fish taking um, taking the bait, and, and uh, um, that's on a hook for a, a fisherman you catch, catching fish. So it's not like it's not like that because the fish only gets it caught in the mouth. We tend to get it caught like like a frog. We just glom onto it and swallow it right down. It is, uh, <laughs> it is, uh, it is very <coughs> stark images. And so that's why the mindfulness of the body is is really helpful because it, it provides a, a really good mirror for what the mind is doing. And sometimes that direct um, investigation of the mind uh, is is uh, um, you know, it, it 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 tend uh, one needs to have a you know, pretty sharp degree of of mindfulness and discernment, uh, and then the body is is a uh, um, it's a good anchor. It's 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 solid. It's 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 present, um, and as and as is oftentimes said, it's like. The body is at least is always in the present moment. You, as soon as you pay attention to the body, you're back in the present moment, and that's really helpful. Um, and then it's a bit more, uh, say, the changes are are, uh, are reasonably um, discernible. <coughs> um, and the uh, uh, and um, as well as a kind of a motivation to to uh, learn how to understand the nature of existence or the nature of this human condition. And um, when we reflect on the body, there's a um, you know what is apparent is what it and it is. It's subject to old age, sickness, death. Um, there's just an article in the, or like a scientific article that was 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 published recently, where where the uh, uh, the body has a or the the human condition, the human mind, the brain <coughs> has a. We're kind of hardwired to. To disregard death, and and, uh, and you, know, you know, quite probably quite helpfully in 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 some cases, um, well, in a lot of cases. But it uh, it does tend to to uh, um, the 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 way that the mind. Actually, identifies and and perceives itself. They've done some experiments of 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 having faces of, or say like the, you, in in the experiment, you have faces of yourself, faces of others, and then there's different words associated, and <clears throat> when we, and then of course. Um, they're hooked up to MRI machines, and and the areas of the brain where there's the association with, 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 with self, with, with, 
with one oneself, then uh, uh, once that that uh, the, the 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 words that are associated uh, with other aspects of of experience, uh, I mean, it empathizes, it sees with itself, when it sees with others, oh, so it's discerning, it's something to do with others. Um, and then, but then when there's the, the words associated, with, say, with death, with funeral, with a, then, and the figure, the image is ourselves, then it skips over it, it doesn't respond. It, <laughs> it just, yeah. oh, didn't, didn't see that, don't know anything about it. <laughs> uh, so it's a, 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 a great, uh, uh, just a, I, I think probably um, a confirmation of what we all experience ourselves and, and intuit. Uh, is that, uh, um, yeah, it's like, uh, it's, it's, I know it's something that happens, yeah, other people, not me. <clears throat> so that, that, but contemplation of the body is really, and, and that is one of the contemplations, and that, those uh, contemplation of death, charna ground compl- contemplations, <clears throat> and then the uh, mindfulness of breathing is a uh, contemplation of the body. But then that's a, it's, it's its own, it's its own practice really, because it does incorporate all the the different aspects of, of uh, the uh, four foundations of mindfulness. And that, uh, uh, but the, the uh, so those contemplations of those foundations of mindfulness are, are very helpful in terms of settling, calming, bringing about a, a, a quality of stillness and and clarity um, but then also having themes for contemplation for the mind to contemplate to investigate uh, to uh, c- create a, a discernment that has uh, has a deep deep understanding of the nature of our experience so that where because it's the 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 say the ability to to not identify, not cling to experience, not the shutting, uh, pushing it away, shutting it out, ignoring. Uh, it's being able to bring it into the heart completely, and to be able to release it back. It's like the like with with the uh, like the contemplations of the elements. And you realize, well, that everything that that is <clears throat> around us um, um, in in the world is uh, a manifestation of these these fundamental elements. It's, a, it's, a, it's like the earth element, fire element, water, uh, the water element, air element, element of space, element of consciousness. These are 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 fundamental elements. And um, yeah, that's what constitutes the whole, but it's what constitutes what we call me and my, um, this, this life, this form. Um, but uh, uh, it's going according, to, in the same way that, that nature outside of us is following its own uh, patterns, its own following its own fundamental laws, fund, fun, following its own fundamental patterns. The same thing for for us. And the, the, uh, these are following these patterns of cause and condition. They arise. They establish themselves for a while, and they cease. Uh, and that uh, and there's this constant arising and ceasing so that having the, the 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 clarity and the stillness that allows one to witness that and to get to not get entangled in the identification so there's a, a quality of peace and a freedom of heart that, 
that is able to arise with that. So that, that contemplation of the, the, of the body, contemplation of feeling in the same way that that's a, as a mental experience, uh, every, every mind moment uh, has a certain feeling tone the feeling tone of pleasant, uh, of of, uh, of the unpleasant, and of neutral, and <coughs> and to be able to say to look at things rather than going up and down, following the quality of that. You're looking more at the what's the feeling tone under that. Also, it tends to like the the movement of mind. It tends to correspond to the the uh, the actual feeling tone that's there. We tend to something that's pleasant. We we tend to to take interest, get excited. There's a certain kind of um, movement toward it with with desire. Um, with something that's unpleasant, we tend to pull back from it with with. Uh, <coughs> Either aversion or uh, dislike in some way, um, uh, with the neutral, uh, we tend to either get dull with it, or 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 confused, uh, uncertain because it's not manifesting anything so clearly. Uh, so that that uh, uh, so that. Uh, being able to use feeling as a doorway for uh, understanding how to establish a continuity of clarity and discernment rather than this, this constant reaction to the 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 tone of the the uh, the, uh, the feeling that we do experience and that uh, so that that that's a an, an, say an, a, a foundation of mindfulness or a a doorway for investigating um, experience. So we're taking these different uh, experience which uh, of uh, within our human condition or human life, and then training ourselves to investigate it from different perspectives and and uh, to understand it in a not just in a superficial way but in a much deeper way uh, and that uh, and of course it does have this uh, that that goal that the buddha uh, says over and over again is right for the uh, the basis of his teaching is to you know, to understand that the, the way in which we create discontent, dissatisfaction, uh, stress, suffering, and to free ourselves from that, and so that with our experience of body and mind, and that's how we uh, say experience the world, because when we say world. Oftentimes we objectify it outside. Okay, there's the world out there, and then there's me. Um, and, but it's and we there's a separateness. But then the Buddha is saying, well, you know, when he's asked what the, the world is, he so said, well, that whereby one is a perceiver of the world and a conceiver of the world. That is the world, because um, we're. We're 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 the avenue, or the 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 mediator. Or the, that's where we experience. It. That's how we. That's what the experience is. Uh, <coughs> the, through the perception and and the, the perceiving and the conceiving. <coughs> the aspects of mind are. Uh, um, you know, being able to to uh, um, just tune into to the because there isn't a the Buddha doesn't 
um, <clears throat> how do you say, um, idealize how our mind should be. Um, and what he does is points to what I'm try, trying to getting us to look, especially with these 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 foundations of mindfulness, trying to get us to understand what we are experiencing, what is the mind, and as a, as a mind with greed or desire, knowing the mind with the, uh, the greed as a mind with greed or desire, with its when it's without greed and desire, and to know it as a mind without. It's a, it's a mind with aversion or ill will. Uh, to know that as the mind with aversion or ill will. Um, when it's not that, when there's not any aversion or ill will, to know that uh, with the mind that is, is uh, <coughs> with, overcome by delusion, or when delusion is not there. Mind that is, say, contracted. The mind that's expansive, the mind that is still, the mind that is <coughs> agitated, and then also knowing the mind that is that is liberated. And what is it? What is the mind that is liberated? So it's a uh, it's an exploration of the yeah the experience of this human condition and. Take, paying attention to it, uh, these, uh, you know, the, these. I remember one time, <coughs> um, when I was in, I did a period of about a, a year retreat in Thailand, and. Uh, I don't know, maybe about ten years or, so, or something like ago, something like that, ten or so years ago, <coughs> and uh, and was in solitude for almost all that time, and was, was had a very uh, there's a lot of continuity in the practice, and I had the opportunity to go you know, pay respects to. Um, Ajahn Mahabua, who is uh, highly uh, regarded, highly revered, as a, and then considered as as yeah, fully awakened by many many people, and um, when I went to see him, he had been in his early nineties, and and. Uh, and and it was quite wonderful because he gave me a time uh, to uh, be with him um, um, uh, on his own. There was a couple, well, a few of us monks uh, went along, but uh, uh, he wasn't. Because generally, when whenever he went anywhere, there'd be huge crowds of people, <clears throat> but. Uh, he uh, he gave me time to uh, meet at his at his kuti, and uh, and we were talking and we were just gaining getting some guidance. And I was asking for just letting him know what my practice was doing and and uh, what uh, what uh, what guidance he would would suggest. And he immediately honed in on the. Coming back to just that, that just purifying the mindfulness, keeping it simple, keeping it straightforward, purifying the mindfulness, purifying this awareness, <coughs> and then using, of course, using the four foundations of mindfulness, but n not so much that it's method oriented or technique oriented, but enough of an object of attention so that the quality of of awareness and knowing is able to stand out and and so that's where where the heart is is able to to free itself so that that uh, 
that sense of of uh, uh, again, if it was, uh, and I mentioned the using the um, when one uses the f- all the four foundations of mindfulness in that way, but particularly the body is is this something having an anchor where one can use it as a mirror to see what the mind is doing, seeing where the mind is moving, what's it, and then how can I release that? How can I allow, allow that, the, the, let's say that, that awareness, that quality of knowing to, to shine forth? And so these four foundations of mindfulness are, are really important basis of the whole training in in uh, uh, in, in the Buddha's teachings, um, and and say then the last um, say category or the phenomena dumb mindfulness of dhammas, and it's a bit of a loose um, a definition, but it's it's what the where we again in terms of the mind or in terms of practice and reflection so that paying attention to the to the five five hindrances okay what are the what are the what are the obstacles that are coming up what are the the habit patterns that of the mind that are 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 problematic um, which is of course the buddha defines and fundamental yeah that Ten- tendency to to uh, sensual gratification, tendency to ill will, tendency to say to drowsiness or dullness, shutting off, or tendency to restlessness uh, and worry that the mind is churning, moving, or the the, uh, the tendency to 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 doubt and and uh, and uncertainty. Yeah, those are our our habits of mind that are the Buddha said this is a uh, this is an obstacle this is a hindrance to 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 development the paying attention to the the qualities of mind that are are really supportive for the liberation of the heart as that uh, the seven factors of awakening so Mindfulness, of course, it's really making that explicit. Mindfulness, investigation of truth, um, effort or energy, um, joy or um, or delight, rapture, tranquility, um, a settling of the body and the mind. Samadhi, the the stilling or the firm establishing of the mind, where it starts to become more unshakable, steady, and then equanimity, where it's seeing things through. It's able to hold whatever. Uh, whatever experience is there, it's held in this quality of of, yeah, of steadiness and unshakability. It's equanimous. It's seeing. It's recognizing. It's understanding. It's not m- pushing anything away. It's not chasing after anything. It is steady. I think that was one of the uh, tea time. There was question of, of uh, say my uh, association with Ajahn Chah or my meeting of Ajahn Chah and uh, and that was one of the things that that that, that I, I saw over and over again that was was really inspiring here was somebody a human being who <coughs> Was in the midst of of activity, uh, engagement, um, was uh, um, people came to him with all their problems, uh, 
the community was sometimes less than ideal, uh, and uh, never ever saw him shaken by anything. He was always uh, equanimous, not in the sense, not in the sense of not f- feeling, not seeing, not uh, or pushing stuff away, but. Um, uh, yeah, not shaken by anything. And not only not shaken, I mean, he would uh, he'd have a great sense of humor about it, really not. Uh, okay, human beings are doing what human beings are doing. It's, uh, it's not a, uh, uh, this is not new. Uh, and that uh, uh, that sense of being, being present. And being present for everybody uh, uh, was... Uh, um, and he, there were so many people were were drawn to him of, of so many different backgrounds and and uh, uh, different um, say statuses within uh, within the uh, within the uh, uh, the culture. I mean, it was um, whether people were educated, not educated, whether they were wealthy, whether they were poor, whether they were f- from um, sort of northeast Thailand or from the re- other areas of Thailand, or whether they were from foreign countries. He, he was, uh, um, uh, he was, was in the midst of that and not, not sort of shaken. So that that uh, that quality of equanimity is a part of, as a yeah, a factor of awakening. So then that these 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 different categories of what what are called the the, the dham anupasana satipatthana the foundation of mindfulness with the, with in regards to contemplation of. Uh, phenomena. Uh, some, do you look at it, take a lens of, okay, the hindrances, you take a lens of the, of the, these incredibly positive, wholesome qualities to view our experience through and to work with uh, on a, a sort of neutral level, or, uh, just the, uh, looking at through the categories of the khandas, body, feeling, perception, mental formations, consciousness, through the six sense bases, just seeing it as sense phenomena, sight, sound, smell, taste, touch, uh, mental objects. I mean, sort of, so that, so rather than, because we tend to uh, get caught up in stories, um, you know, whether it's uh, our own story, or somebody else's story, Story of the world. We're uh, we love stories. I mean, who doesn't like a good story? Uh, but you know, those stories are can just keep going on and on. You know? And uh, being able to say, okay, that's that's just sight, sound, smell, taste, touch, mental object. There's there's a simplification there. That is is uh, uh, again, it's not just dismissive, but it's like. Oh right, that's actually that's all that's going on. And then, of course, the the, the other category that the Buddha encourages in terms of investigation is that, that uh, <coughs> the uh, four noble truths, and and, uh, and that's uh, um, the. Uh, and it's looking at things from an yeah an experiential level. What are we experiencing? Inter are we experiencing a something that is is making us peaceful, or is it something that's making us agitated? Uh, how do we? What are we contributing? If it's making us agitated or dissatisfied, what? How are we contributing to that? Uh, if it's something that's creating peace, a settling of 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 the the uh, that experience of of uh, say discontent, 
uh, moving to how do we how do we support that? How do we uh, give attention to that? How do we make much of it? Um, and how, do, yeah, how is it sustainable? Uh, so it's an exploration. So these teachings are, and the tools that the Buddha is giving us are, are uh, yeah, they're tools. It's learning how to use the tools, learning how to, uh, it's like, uh, yeah, the, uh, the, the, the teachings the, mm, that we have is really learning how to become skillful in the use of those tools. It's like um, recently, I've been, of course, been away for quite some time, and <coughs> uh, one of the things I did re- recently, I went and took a look at the workshop, and. Uh, we got a lot of tools, and uh, and I started looking at it. And it's it's very it's well set up. It's really nicely looked after. It. It's nice and clean and neat and tidy. That's really uh, wonderful to see. Um, but so for myself, I said, I haven't got a clue how to use most of those tools there. <laughs> And then I have to have to rely on others who have the knowledge. Um, but the uh, you know, those tools for cultivation of 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 peace and discernment uh, that the Buddha has given us, uh, it's, uh, there. I'm more familiar with that, and, and that's something to be. You uh, always have to. Any whatever tool it is, we have to learn how to use it, and develop the skill with it, and, and, so, <clears throat> and understand where it's where its possibilities. So, with these teachings on the, the four foundations of mindfulness, one, I mean, it's a, a it it really is a foundational teaching, and and. Uh, uh, one that the Buddha returned to over and over again, and and also one that he actually said if if he uh, um, um, taught on the on the four foundations of mindfulness and and uh, uh, continued to teach except for breaks for for eating for dealing with bodily functions for sleeping resting. Uh, he could keep teaching until he died and still not exhaust the, the possibilities. And so for, so for ourselves to, yeah, to lift them up, investigate them, learn how to use them, and explore their, their, their application. It does, as the Buddha says, this is what leads to the uh, Say the, yeah, the overcoming of, of suffering, the purification of beings. So I'll offer that for reflection this evening.